Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Project Lemons to Lemonade. Our next guest company has trained over 4,000 security guards over the years. Last year, they had 800 active staff on their roster, and that many people got mobilized and scheduled by awesome human minds. And he's been the production manager for Grammy Award winning recording artist Zed for the last five years. And my son Enzo is so jealous. Please welcome Chris Kerr from XA Staffing and Security. Hi, Chris. Hi, Daphne. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you have like this crazy dynamic in your business where you have security guards and you're super passionate about customer service and values. And I like, you know, when you think about security guards, you don't think about those two things really meshing. Not generally. <laughs> <laughs> so how, like, how are you guys doing this? What are you guys doing? I mean, really, I, I, I don't know if we're really doing anything as much as we're just, we kind of started this business in the entertainment, in the entertainment field. And, and we started a little small security crew that did small concerts. And over the years, it grew. And being in that space, we're, we're dealing with people. So it's not really, it's never really been about security for us in the traditional sense of the term it's always been about managing people and like helping people follow rules not as much enforcing rules and so i think it's just really been ingrained in kind of our upbringing as a business and as uh, the years have gone on it's become a much clearer priority for us that it's our kind of defining characteristic is that we're it, it's pretty simple we're just nice to people <laughs> I, I heard a story where you guys like taking like the most difficult customers, right? So like people who are super inebriated at a concert and your security guys being so nice at diffusing the situation almost before it even happens. And then having people think, you know, like this guy who would have been traditionally thrown out, just totally turn his attitude around and, and thank you later for being like, uh, this is a, like just an amazing way to deal with people. Uh, and is that something that you guys teach or like, how do you, how do you get 800 of your staff to understand um, what to do in those situations? Yeah, we teach, but uh, the, the credit really lies in our supervisor team on the ground. And they're the ones that manage all of the guards underneath them. They manage the interactions with the clients. They're there as air support you know, when a, when a situation needs diffusing. So we, we spend a lot of time and invest a, a, a lot of resources into growing our supervisor's education base. You know, I'm fortunate to be surrounded by a great partner and, and great uh, management staff that just really care. <laughs> that's, and that's 98% of the recipe, I think, is just mm -hmm. caring. Yeah. And, and well, speaking of caring, like that, that's kind of what we're talking about today is um, what's happening as people open up for phase one, phase two, phase three, and we're having to, you know, get back into, you know, meshing with, with each other, with society, how um, I, I wanted to ask you some tips for business owners, like how can people do that the best way without everybody's so sensitive right now uh, and, you know, for a good reason. So how do we get back into society um, and hang out with each other in a, in like a, like a caring way, like you say. And it was funny. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you know, how is it that some of these major, major companies, global businesses don't know how to set up a lineup outside their building, you know? And, and, and I realized I go, you know, there's only, where do we line up in our lives at the movie theater, Disneyland, you know, in concerts, we don't line up at the grocery store. We don't line up at the mall. We ne when's the last time you lined up at a hardware store? It just doesn't happen. And so I think that what we need to do is stop looking at this. Like we're trying to prevent access as much as we're just trying to communicate to people that we're doing our best to navigate these things. We've never had to navigate before. And communication is important. So we want to hear from you. If I, if I run a store and, I, and, and I've set something up that's frustrating, I want to hear the most constructive feedback possible. So I want to have a mechanism in place where I can get feedback from the ground level so I can hear, hear what my customers are saying and make adjustments so that it's a better experience for them. And that's what we do with shows. You know, if I'm, I'm trying to get 25,000 people into a building or a, or a field, 
and the lineup is slow because we have a technology backup or whatever, but we've got to figure out ways that we can a learn that it's happening, find out what our timeline is to resolve it and then come up with the best plan that we can. And then most importantly is communicate to everybody what's going to happen. So that, that would be my biggest advice is that it doesn't, it's not necessarily, I think about security in every sense, like there's still loss prevention needs and, and, and uh, liability needs and stuff that, that can be adequately covered by a security guard. But if you're a small outfit and you don't have that kind of budget, then just make an effort to put a policy in place that says you engage these customers as they come in. Uh, honestly, my biggest advice is just make, make a word exchange with all of them of some kind, whether it's a hello or, you know, thanks for your patience or have a great day or I like your jacket or do something and make eye contact. So you're like opening the doors to a conversation. Right. And then, and then so, you know, if you don't, if you don't open that relationship, well then there's not going to be any inclination generally from 90% of those people that they're going to give you any sort of feedback, good or bad or otherwise. You have to blow them out of the water with service inside to get a great Google review. You don't have to do much to get a bad one. But if you get, if you get a, a personal connection off the gates, whether it's with your customer service or your security or, or the person collecting the carts in the parking lot, whoever the case, whoever, whatever name tag it is, if there's that, hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming to the store today. Whatever the case may be, they're going to be far more inclined to be like, hey, you know, oh, hey, one thing I noticed was inside, you know, there was this part of the store that, you know, was confusing. You may not have got that feedback before. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, like the golden rule in our business, I mean, to, to show you my hand, it's really just talking to people. Right. And, I, and uh, when we talked before, I hadn't thought about the customer service or like the experience starts at the lineup. And that's what a lot of business owners yeah. are kind of missing. They're like super focused on what's happening inside their location. But really the customer experience is happening in the lineup. And so why aren't they focusing on those conversation pieces? And even if they're hiring um, external security or extra staff, they should be following whatever customer service is being trained inside as well, right? And, and it's so confusing. You're like, do I got the cart? Do I not got the cart? <laughs> do I stand here? Should is I do? Clean? Yeah, Can I the touch the clean? cart? What do I do with my dirty cart? Like nobody knows what to do, yeah, you yeah. know? And so I, I, it's, if you think about like all the places we've all been that are, are foreign, so you go get on a plane, go to an airport. Airports are great. Like all of this knowledge exists. We like, we're not inventing it. We're just, we're just stealing it from place. All these other smart people that have done the work already. So when you walk down an airport and you go, Oh yeah, that's a great place for a sign or where's the bathroom. Oh, there's a sign right there telling me where the bathroom is. It's all about communication, whether that's signage or voice or stickers on the floor or branded stanchions or whatever the case may be. There's a million opportunities to communicate with your customers. We make use of all of these architectural things that exist for different uses to be able to communicate with people. And that's, right. that's the name of the game. So, you know, if, if you're operating a, a store and you're struggling with your lineup, remember, it's like when I pull into the parking lot, my first impression of the business is the, the lineup. And if it's fallen over pylons and caution tape that's been stepped on and stuff, it's messy. So store's messy. So then I get to the front of the line and then, you know, if I could just get like this, and this, it's just, you know, okay. It's, I guess it's kind of what I expect, but it's not making me like, yeah, it's, you it's know, feel good. Yeah, it's an you know, And it doesn't take much to change that, right? And yeah. so, you know, take, just take examples from places like airports, transit stations, signage. There's a, there's a, there's a hundred great sign manufacturers in town. Mm -hmm. They'll be happy to help out, you know, and an investment in signage when, when we do big music festivals, we I cannot overstate the importance of the signage budget. It's the most important thing to a good fan experience. If you don't know where the bathrooms are, where the food is, where the exit is, you get scared, you get worried, you get angry, you get confused. Why mm -hmm. is it any different, you know, in a business yeah. setting? Yeah. And so. you, you guys um, talk a lot, like the other one, the other example is Disney that you talk a lot about. So let's all remember what it's like we have an amazing time waiting, waiting in line. At well, yeah. They're, they're uh, the best at it. They are the best at it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so just take a page out of their book. We've already uh -huh. done the work. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. That was really Thanks fun. Thanks for having me.